everybody knows that ESP Home is awesome. And so far you have been running it on either ESP 8266s or ESP32 boards, or something similar. But did you know that from today you can also run it on the Raspberry Pi Pico W? Yes, Pico W because we need the Wi Fi connection. So stick around and I'll show you how to add Raspberry Pi Pico W to ESP Home. And when we thought that there will be no more surprises, the ESP Home devs, together with the Home Assistant developers, have brought us something new. And this is the support for the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Ok, let's first clear a couple things up front. First, it needs to be Pico W. There is also Pico version, but that one will not work because that one doesn't have Wi-Fi connectivity. Second. Pico W does have Bluetooth capability inside the CPU or inside the connectivity controller. But that Bluetooth connectivity is not enabled on any Pico device and, unfortunately, it cannot be enabled even later down the road. Plus, there are currently two open issues. Or, I wouldn't call them issues, but yeah, that can be a problem for some at the time of the recording, that the server-side installation still doesn't work. That means that after we compile the firmware, we have to download it and drag it to the Pico W. But enough of the talk, and let's see what you need to do to get the Pico W running inside the ESP Home. First, unfortunately, this is still in the dev release of ESP Home, so this one will not do. The good thing is that you can run two instances of the ESP Home on your own Home Assistant server. Go to Add-on Store and under ESP Home you will see the ESP Home, the one that you probably already have installed. You will see the beta version, but you will also see the dev or development version. Click on it, install it. By the way, even if you do not have add-ons inside your Home Assistant, you can run them by cloning the repository. Dev version is now installed. I will not be using show in sidebar since I already have my main release here. Instead, I will just tick the box next to auto update and leave start on boot. And let's start the development version of ESP Home. In order for you to add the Pico W, you have to press here open web UI. And this looks like the standard version, but on top we can see that this is the development version. Let's click on new device. Let's name it. Pico W, next. We will skip this step. We will select Raspberry Pi Pico W, next. And that's it. For now, I will also skip this install step. If we go inside the code, you will see what code is needed currently to activate it since this is still not been merged into the latest release. The name of the device is the one that we've given device previously. Then we have RP2040, the board type is Raspberry Pi Pico W, framework and the platform version is still needed at the time of the recording of this video. When this pool is merged, these lines will not be needed anymore. The rest here is the standard. We have logger enabled, API with encryption enabled, over the air updates with the password enabled, Wi-Fi password and SSID, and also we have Pico fallback hotspot. I have added here a couple of more lines. One is the manual IP, and here I have specified the static IP, which is the IP address of this Pico W, the gateway, which is my main gateway on the network, and also subnet for my network. Let's save everything, install, and we will select manual download. While we are waiting for the firmware to finish compiling, what you can do is you can prepare your Raspberry Pi Pico. If you have it already plugged in in your computer, unplug it, press and hold the button on it and once again reconnect it. The new window should pop up on the Windows machine and it would be called Raspberry Pi or RPI-RP2. Let's download this project. And the last step is to drag this file, which has a name Pico W. This is the same name as we named the device, .uf2, and drag it to our Raspberry Pi Pico. 
after the file has been dragged there, the device should auto-reboot. The installation is now done. If you want to add the device, go to Integrations, click on plus sign, ESP Home, and type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. Submit. If you are experiencing issues and you cannot add Pico W to your Home Assistant by using the Integrations ESP Home and then the IP address, let's try this one here. Open Edit and disable the encryption and the key. Let's save. Let's once again install it. While we are waiting for the firmware to get compiled, once again unplug it, press and hold the button on it, and once again reconnect it. And drag the file once again to the Raspberry Pi RP2. After the file has finished copying, the device should reboot itself. And now let's try to add this device to Home Assistant. Plus, ESP Home, type in the IP address of the device that you used, for me this is this one here, and click Submit. The device has now been added. And this is it, the Raspberry Pi Pico W has been successfully added to the Home Assistant via the ESP Home. The question is for what would you use the Raspberry Pi Pico? Well, actually, you can use it for the same things that you used ESP32. The Raspberry Pi Pico has a bunch of GPIO pins enabled on the board, and you can hook up various sensors, I2C, analog sensors, etc. There are pre-made modules that you can buy, for example, BME280 that can be used to measure the temperature and humidity. Of course, you can hook up the other sensors, such as the motion sensor, the light sensor, VOC sensor, or the particle sensor. It's all up to you. Let me hear your thoughts and ideas about Pico W. Do you think that it's a good idea and good option that we have also support for it inside ESP Home? What are some of the things that you would love to see in regards to this integration, but also in regard to the other ESP Home enabled devices? And of course, don't forget to leave your ideas for what you would like to or for what you will be using this Pico W ESP Home integration inside Home Assistant. Let me take a couple of seconds and thank all of you who have become YouTube channel members and who have been supporting me for a long, long, long time. Thank you all for all of your support. But also thanks to each and every one of you who has watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have fun.